What's up guys, Chun is back, and this is the second round of the tournament that was going on at the TPX Zat Chat that uh, Gold Rules 2 hosted. Um, I did win my first round, so I'm moving on, and ironically, this is against Gold Rules 2 himself, so this is the semifinal match. He picked Hoenn for his region, um, as you can see there. And this was an overall great match, so we're definitely going to see how it goes. I'm leading with Frostlass, he's leading with Flygon. I know this Flygon is Scarfed, um, because why else would you lead with a Flygon? But I was curious to see how much Ice Shard would do, and it cut, does a clean 75% to this Flygon. The U-turn is obvious, but I was kind of hoping for the one-hit KO, but then again, I didn't do a damage calc to see how much it would do. Spikes might have been the better move there, but anywho, he goes to Zangoose, and I thought a Night Slash might be coming, so I go immediately to Heat Tran for the resist. And I figured most likely Zangus is Scarfed. So he's packing Shadow Claw though. So I'm going to go for the Stealth Rock. He's going to bring Flagon in to try to threaten me out with the Earthquake, but I am carrying the Shucka Berry. So even if he went for it, it would have did 95% max. He predicted a, my switch to a Flying type by going for the Stone Edge. So I just stay in and went for went for the Dragon Pulse, so it definitely worked out for me, because he did lose a Scouter on his team, so now he's going to go into Swampert. This team doesn't really like Swampert, whether I have Sinnoh Pokes or not, because um, I have to use multiple Pokemon just to take it down, so I'm going to bring Bronzong in, knowing Stealth Rock was coming, but just in case he did want an Earthquake, and uh, I went for the Hypnosis to try to put it to sleep, but um, no dice there, so he does roar me out into my Dusnoir, and I'm going to get the Will-O-Wisp on him just to put him on a timer and get the burn so his Earthquakes will do less damage. He roars me again, and it looks like he's trying to scout my team at this point. Um, so I obviously can't stay in with Lucario because Lucario is just a huge offensive threat in general. So I'm going to go back to Bronzong, predicting the Earthquake, which he does go for. And he actually goes for Yawn, actually. And this really surprised me, because um, that tells me he doesn't have a second attacking move. He doesn't have Surf or Ice Beam. So I go for the Payback, and um, I'm forced to go to Dustnor at this point, because I don't want Bronzong going to sleep. Because I may, may need Bronzong to do a Trick Room sleep later on, so... Um, He's gonna, but he's just gonna go for Roar again, and I could have tried to predict that, but I wanted to be safe in case he thought about wasting PP by using another move like Stealth Rock again, and Bronzong would end up going to sleep. But this is why Roar never works out when you're trying to scout for the whole team. Um, he gets Bronzong again, so which mathematically it makes sense that you wouldn't be able to get every single team member with Roar. So he does go to. Reloom, probably realizing this, and probably because I said it in the chat while we were playing, so anyway, um, I decide that Bronzong isn't going to be that useful to me, so I just let him take the spore, and my plan here is to switch to Frostlass on the substitute, I wanted to gauge to see how he used his Reloom, if he would spore first turn or sub first turn, which uh, I guess some of you guys know about that, but anyway, uh, this turn was actually crucial because I was trying to pull up Smogon to see if Destiny Bomb would go through sub, but of course the website was being ridiculously slow, so I lost my patience, went for the Ice Shard to break the sub so I could bring either Infernape or Heatran back in to finish Breloom off. I think the page finally loaded after the battle, and it turns out the Destiny Bomb would have went through sub, so because of Smogon, Breloom is alive and he should be gone. Thanks a lot, Smogon. Anyway, I go to Heatran, go straight for the Flamethrower. He does switch out, brings Swampert back in, but I really don't care because between the burn and the Flamethrower damage, I'm going to be able to take Swampert down with a Dragon Pulse. So, that is good game, Swampert. Hope to uh, play you again sometime. So, I didn't want to bring Infernape in there because I didn't want to risk missing an Overheat or him predicting my U-turn and subbing. And close combat doesn't want hit KO Breloom anyway, but Zangus comes back in, so I'm going to go back to Bronzong on the obvious close combat, knowing he has nothing else that can really hurt me. And here I make a big mistake. I should have double switched back to Dustmore, knowing he was locked into close combat. 
but I just decided to let him finish Bronze Long off because at this point I was feeling very sleep deprived. It was almost midnight and I really had to go to bed to go to work in the morning and I was jealous of Bronzong sleeping so and I couldn't sleep. So anyway, I'm gonna go to Dust Norin now and I could have made up for that mistake I made last turn by double switching back to Heatran but I decide to stay in and pain split instead knowing Breloom was gonna come in thinking there was nothing I could do about it when a simple switch to Heatran would have solve that problem and Breloom would be gone now, but now Breloom is still around, so I go for the Shadow Sneak just to get damage in before I go to sleep, and I just start the cycle up again. I'm going to bring in something on the Substitute, break the sub with a super effective move, let him finish off that poke with a Focus Punch, which this time is going to be Heatran, and this time I'm going to bring in Infernape. So, uh, quick note guys, this is not the best way to deal with Breloom at all, just to let you know. So I did kind of play around Breloom like a nub. Um, but anyway, Heatran goes down, I'm going to bring Infernape back in, and here's the second mistake, I'm going to go straight for the overheat. Um, and it was probably because I was half sleep and half getting frustrated with Breloom. So in comes a Claydol. Luckily, Overheat still does a good chunk of damage, giving Claydol special defense. But then again, it is Infernape and it is a stab Overheat. So I'm gonna switch out. I'm gonna go to Dust Noir at this point, predicting a rapid spin. But instead, he's gonna go for the Earthquake, which actually surprised me because I expect Earth Power on Claydol, not Earthquake. Um, not that he's very offensive on either end of things, but. Either way, Dustnor takes it like the one-eyed beast it is, unless you count the faces on the front and back of him, which he would have five eyes in that case. But I figured I'm in a pretty good position, and I can stay in and just burn sleep turns as he tries to knock me out with multiple earthquakes. But he sees that's not going to work out, because at any point I can wake up and just paint split the damage off, so he's going to switch to Regice and hope to do a little bit better. And he is going to go for the Ice Beam at this point and hopefully one hit KO me, but even the Ice Beam isn't going to take me out. And that's specially defensive Dust Noir for you. I don't even know why people still make it physically defensive given the way the OU metagame is now. Um, I mean, for me, I just believe Dust Noir should be able to block Rapid Spin and do its job. If it wants to block physical attackers, just Will-O-Wisp stuff. But Anyway, I am going to go for Will-O-Wisp here, speaking of which, I was pretty confident Dustnor could survive two Ice Beams, given the Leftovers recovery. I missed the Will-O-Wisp, unfortunately, but look at this, the second Ice Beam I survived with 9 HP, and I get a Pain Split off. So, he's kind of raging at this point, and the plan here was to just get enough damage on Reg Ice, um, given it has... If I'm correct, it does have very good special bulk. So I was going to bring Infernape in, but instead I decided to bring Lucario in on the predicted Ice Beam. I thought about risking it and going for an agility here to try to finish the game up and sweep everything else on his team. But I realized that most, pretty much every Red Ice either has Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, or Focus Punch, so that wouldn't work out. So I went straight for the close combat just to finish him off. And uh, he's going to bring Claydol back in at this point. Now, I did a calc and crunched a 61% max to standard support Claydol. I thought Claydol was anywhere between 60 to 75%, so I didn't like those odds. I went for the Ice Punch to maximize my chances for Hex, hoping for a Freeze or a Crit. And he literally lived with a slither of HP. And I must have got max damage on that Ice Punch, though. And my heart just sank there because he finishes me off with Earthquake, so very unfortunate. So I bring Infernape back in, finish Clay off with the U-turn. I could have went for the close combat to try to get a final sweep, but seeing as I was pretty sure Zangus was scarfed, and because I epically failed breeding that Infernape, and it has a neutral nature and not a plus speed nature, so Zangus would outspeed me by literally 6 points, so that really sucks. 
that kind of dictated my place throughout the match too um, if you guys did notice so I'm gonna bring Dustnor back in at this point uh, Breloom's gonna come back in I get the shadow sneak off again um, before I go to sleep and this time I do decide to just stay in and try to get a second turn wake up just to see if I could break the sub with one shadow sneak and I do get the second turn wake up and I get the shadow sneak but unfortunately it does not break the sub so I'm kind of regretting my mishandling of Brelu because again it should be gone and it's not so he's gonna hit me with a seed bomb um, after he subs again I'm gonna go for the shadow sneak again knowing that he will spore this time I believe so at this point yes he does so his uh what he has to do is pretty much clear um, as long as he keeps Relum behind a sub then he is going to win this match so but I'm gonna bring Infernape in here and just try one last time to break the sub and try to just get as much damage as I can he is gonna go for the focus punch I'm gonna u-turn out and unless he puts some extra bulk on this Breloom, I got absolute minimum damage on that Breloom, which really, really sucks. Uh, that U-turn should have broke the sub, unless he put some extra HP EVs on it. So, I'm really sad that it doesn't. So I bring Dustnor in, he misses the Focus Punch, of course. So now I'm going to bring Inferni back in. I'm going to U-turn out again this time breaking the sub but I believe at this point he's just gonna sub again and I realize that the only way I'm gonna win this match is if I try to PP stall him out of his attacks and uh, hope that Zangus doesn't outspeed Infernape so that's the only way I'm winning this or get it in a situation to where Dustnor, Zangus comes in on Dustnor and he has to go for a Shadow Claw and hopefully Infernape can survive it so he's just gonna keep going for sub at this point just to burn off some PP because he knows as long as he keeps his sub he's got this match won ironically on one of these turns I could have won if I had just switched to Infernape because he went for Spore again and I could have won with Sleep Claws and that would have just been epic but he is gonna go for the Seed Bomb and I just got kind of tired at this point. I said, let's let's just end it. It's late. I need to go to bed. So and he just finishes me off with Dustnor. Finish off my Dustnor and I just bring Ape in. Go for the close combat, break the sub, and he's able to finish me off with a focus punch. And that is going to be the game. But it, it was an excellent game, Gold Rules. Um, definitely hope to play you again sometime. And guys, if you like what you saw, don't forget to leave a like, uh, comment, and subscribe. If you want to, and Shun is out. Peace.